Going along with the unit on gravitation, uh, we have this tutorial on how to calculate the period of something orbiting the Earth or the Sun, or how to calculate, say, the orbital radius, or pretty much anything you want using uh, Kepler's third law, which we'll derive in class. Anyway, um, this is example four out of the packet. There, there, there you see up there, it says example four. Okay, um, so if you could find that in your packet, that would be good. Pause the video while you're looking for it, I guess. Um, and it's asking about something called a geosynchronous satellite, which if that's not a term that you've ever heard before, um, that's actually what a lot of, say, communication satellites are. Um, for a lot of satellites, you want them to be always directly above. No, that didn't work at all, did it? You want them to always be directly above the same spot on the Earth. That way, if they're sending a signal down, you know exactly where it's going to. Okay, so a geosynchronous satellite has an orbital period of exactly 24 hours. All right, and that's how it stays above the exact same spot on the Earth. Okay, so the first question wanted to know, like, what's the orbital radius of that geosynchronous satellite? And... In order to um, have us work that, oh, look at that. I, I inserted another video here where I'm working this out, and I'll, I'll pause it from time to time. Okay, so note the first significant fact uh, which we're looking at here is you're told the period. The orbital period always has something to do with the orbital radius. So if you look at the work that I've written so far, I wrote down, hey, look, a period's 24 hours. Like, that's nice, but you can't plug in 24 hours. You're always going to have to convert it to seconds. Okay, which is the next line down. So you can see I've come up with 86,400 seconds is the number of seconds in a day. All right, and then this, if you recall from your notes, is Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law, we've got the... Uh, the period squared, orbital period squared over there. The m here, that's always the mass of the thing around which you're orbiting. So in this problem, that would be the Earth. And then a, that's the semi-major axis of the orbit. In this case, since it's a circle, the orbital radius is the semi-major axis. Okay, let's let the video play for a little bit more. What I'm going to start doing is plugging things into it, and then based on the period, we should be able to, and knowing the mass of the Earth, we should be able to calculate what the radius of the orbit must be. Oh, look how fast I type. Look how fast the cursor blinks. All right, let's, let's pause that for a moment. Look at that. Okay, you can ponder the work, I guess, on your own, but you can see I plugged in the period. Whoop, whoop, that's not what I wanted to do. I plugged in the period in seconds right there, um, plugged in the mass of the Earth, and then the only unknown there is the radius cubed. Now, on the calculator screen, um, there, there's one operation which you're going to have to do that you maybe haven't had to do all that often, and that's take a cube root. There's a couple ways to do it. One is a pain in the butt. I, I don't even know actually where that option is on your calculator. The other way, though, is to say, well, like a square root is a one-half power. A cube root is a one-third power. So you'll notice that at the point where I wanted to take a cubed root, I raised it to the one-third power. Okay, and that's the same thing as a cube root. All right. If you're hazy on the algebra, I took this, squared it, multiplied it by that and that, divided it by 4 pi squared, and at that point I had r cubed equals some number, and then I took a cube root. Okay. Um, part B wants to know how far above the Earth's surface that is. So let's see what happens next. All right. Pause there for a moment. Pause, pause. Okay. Um, when they ask for height above the Earth's surface, that is different from what the orbital radius is, right? That's like if you looked up how far above your head is it, that's the height. Darn it. There we go. That's the height, not the radius. So we have to subtract the radius of the Earth. Okay, which is a fairly simple operation, and here goes... 
answer. All right, stop for a moment. Part C. Whenever I ask you how fast a satellite's moving, if it's moving in a circular orbit, which this one is, then you're going to go with this statement right here, which is that the force of gravity is the force that makes the satellite move in a circle, right? Um, if, it, if it stopped for some reason, right, it would just be falling towards the Earth. But because it's moving sideways fast enough, it keeps missing the Earth, and the thing that allows it to continue moving in a circle, sort of like swinging something on the end of a string, right? The thing that makes it able to move in a circle is the force of gravity. So force of gravity, that's this gmm over r squared, is going to be set equal to mv squared over r. All right, that is an operation that you are going to do like all the time when it's a circular orbit. If it's an ellipse, you may not do that. We'll discuss like actual elliptical orbits in a little bit, but let's, let's let it go. And typing into my calculator, 3,076 meters per second. Okay, which is pretty darn fast. All right, the last part of this question um, I've put in here because all the time we're going to ask about things like well, just a conceptual question, right? There's no math involved in Part D. It just wants to know how the period, that's the capital T, would be different if we changed some things. So Part 1 is going to ask us to consider what if the Earth were more massive. Part 2 is going to ask us, okay, what if the satellite were more massive? And then Part 3, uh, what if it didn't orbit at the distance that we calculated in Part A, right? What if it were further away? All right. Um, for all parts of that question, we're going to answer it using Kepler's third law. Oh, man, my hand's back in the way again. Hold on, hold on. Hand, wait, wait, wait. Hand, hand. I need the hand out of the way. There we go. Stop. All right. Um, as you can see, for the first part, right, if, if the mass of the Earth were larger, in Kepler's third law, the mass of the Earth is on the bottom of that equation. So if we're dividing by a larger number, that would make the period be a smaller number. Okay, for part two, I just wrote no change, but let's talk about that. Where is the mass of the satellite in that equation? If you thought it isn't, you are correct. It is not there. Therefore, the mass of the satellite is actually completely unimportant. We've said before in class, that you could put the International Space Station or a Buick in orbit around the Earth at the same speed as long as they were at the same distance from the center of the Earth. The orbital speed would be identical because the mass of the satellite is actually irrelevant. It would obviously take more energy to put a heavier object into orbit, but as far as how fast it has to go, that's actually independent of its mass. Okay, and then part three, uh, if the radius of the satellite's orbit were larger, then if you look at where the, the radius is, oh man, the last frame is blurry. What the heck? Well, if you look at where the, the radius fits in in that equation, that's the A there. Recall, that, that's, that's the same thing. So um, the, the radius is on the top. That's going to mean... Uh, that if the radius increases, the orbital period should increase. Okay. Well, that's the whole thing. So I guess we don't need to go over that anymore. If you want to look at another example, example 5 is very similar, and you can get the worked out answers to that on the uh, Google Drive. Obviously, the answer key is there. Um, that one, it has one small, um, if you want to call it an error, you can. The Earth's orbit is not actually circular. That one kind of pretends it's circular. Okay, and then has you calculate things based off of that. So ignore that factual inaccuracy. We're just going to pretend it's really a circle because it's almost a circle uh, and use that to calculate whatever we're going to calculate in example five. Okay, I hope that helps with the homework. Um, and uh, if you need another example before you launch into the homework, please ponder example five. Thank you very much.